Today I want to address a, a very unique question, and it will be the focus of our Bible study. Someone wrote in and asked, who are the earth dwellers in the book of Revelation? Who are the earth dwellers? Uh, depending upon your translation, it's phrased in different ways uh, in your Bible. But a very interesting question, and before we begin, I want to make an important point, and that point is this. I don't ever want you to feel that whatever question you have is not important. Uh, someone wrote in uh, concerning uh, various things that we teach on and said, why don't we just focus upon all of the essential doctrines and leave all of the rest of it for others? Well, I would just say that if it's in the Bible, it's important. And I never want anyone to feel that because you read the scriptures and you come across something contained in the Bible and you scratch your head and say, I have no idea what that means, that's what a proper teacher or minister exists to do, is to help you learn the scriptures. So obviously I understand the importance of essential doctrines but I also believe that if God put it in the Bible, you need to understand it. So if you're a new believer, and that is our target audience, is unchurched people and unsaved people and new believers, don't ever feel that your questions uh, make you inferior or your asking of the question is not important. If it's in the Bible, I'll do my best to explain it to you. And it is important in my humble opinion, because it is found multiple times in the Bible, both Old Testament and New, the Bible refers to earth dwellers. And so that's what we're going to answer today, and I want you to turn with me into Revelation chapter 3. Uh, the question was asked, who are the earth dwellers in the book of Revelation? And so though I'm going to show you earth dwellers or those who dwell on the earth in various passages, we will come back to and highlight particularly the question on the book of Revelation, the earth dwellers in this final apocalyptic book in Scripture. Revelation chapter 3, go down to verse 10, and let's read through verse 13 in context. There are seven letters to seven literal churches in the book of Revelation. This one in Revelation 3 that I'm about to read is a part of the letter to the church at Philadelphia. And though John, the author of the book of Revelation, wrote seven literal letters to seven literal churches, they are also uh, prophetic in that they address not only the churches of John's era, but they address the churches and the strengths and the weaknesses of the churches throughout church history. We know that the church began, it was inaugurated in the upper room in the book of Acts, and the church age concludes with an event called the rapture of the church. And then we go into a period of seven years called the tribulation. And the bulk of what we're going to see today with this subject on earth dwellers deals with, in the book of Revelation, a period of time, as I've mentioned, called the tribulation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. Pause right there. This great time of testing in Revelation 3 and 10 is referring to the tribulation, a seven-year period of judgment ordained by God that takes place after the rapture and concludes with the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it will be a horrific time. The Bible says, I will keep you from. And so if you don't have highlighted in your Bible the word from, I want you to highlight it. Because we're not going through the tribulation, 
we will be protected from the tribulation. There are various views on that that exist in the church world, but this is one of the classic texts that's hard to get by because it's translated accurately, rendered from the original text accurately. I will protect you from, not in, not during, not through. I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. Verse 11, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. As we always do, before we begin this Bible study, let's take a moment to pray. Father, once again, as we open up the Holy Scriptures, we thank you that it is the Holy Spirit whom you have given that is our divine teacher and mentor. I pray that you would guide us through the truth of the Bible today. I pray that people would come to greater understanding of your Holy Word. And I pray especially for those who may be listening who perhaps in their heart are not certain as to where they stand with God or whether they're living ready in these last days in which we live. I pray that through the preaching and teaching of the word that you would draw them to yourself. And when the invitation is given at the end of our study, I pray that by the Holy Spirit you would cause them to turn from sin and turn to Christ. May all who hear the word of the Lord today be saved and secure and ready for your soon coming. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. And we pray and ask it in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Uh, throughout the prophetic book of Revelation contained in our Bibles, we discover an interesting group of people who are introduced to us as those who dwell on the earth, or oftentimes called earth dwellers. And these are a group of people, as we've read today, that will be here on this earth during the tribulation period. Many new students of the Bible and of the book of Revelation are intrigued by this. And some have written to me, obviously, I'm addressing it today, wanting to know who are the earth dwellers in the book of Revelation. I fear that some have asked the question uh, because of various uh, heretical content that they've seen on social media. Please be careful of who you listen to on social media know their ministry, know their background, know their credential, uh, know that they have a surety in the word of God and know what they're talking about because the Bible does warn us in prophecy that in the last days there would be an overwhelming amount of false teachers and false teaching. And I fear that some have heard uh, some of the inane social media falsehoods that this passage in the book of Revelation that deals with earth dwellers, and not just once, but multiple times, gives biblical backing to the possibility that there is going to be, during the tribulation, uh, a zombie apocalypse. Now, I'm trying to say that with a straight face, but indeed, there are some who have tried to take uh, the subject of earth dwellers in the tribulation period and said perhaps this is the Bible uh, quantifying that there really is coming a zombie apocalypse. Let me just 
dispel that foolishness. There is no zombie apocalypse found anywhere in the Bible, and anyone teaching that or trying to twist the scripture to imply that is someone that should be avoided. Now, depending upon the English translation of the Bible you are reading from, uh, the original text is rendered in various ways, but all accurately. For example, in the NASB, it says to test those who dwell on the earth. In the ESV in verse 10, it translates it to try those who dwell on the earth. In the New King James Version, <clears throat> it says to test those who dwell on the earth. And in the NLT, it says to test those who belong to this world. Now, whether it is rendered test or try uh, from the original language, it's accurate. It simply means to discover the character or the nature of something by putting it to a test or to putting it through a trial. And so that is actually one of the reasons for the tribulation period. Those who dwell on this earth, they were not raptured. They were not saved at the time of the rapture. They were left behind. And the populace that remains on the earth after the tribulation are going to be put to a test and put to a trial. And it's important to keep in mind that a major purpose for the judgments of the tribulation found in Revelation chapter 6 all the way through Revelation chapter 19 are to indeed test these earth dwellers under the most extreme circumstances in order to vindicate why they are being judged, why they rejected Christ, and why they did not receive the gospel. The description of those who dwell on this earth or earth dwellers is found 11 times in nine verses in the book of Revelation. Uh, if you're taking notes, earth dwellers, those who dwell on this earth, is found 11 times. So obviously, by that simple fact, we understand that it has a level of importance. It's found, and I'll give you those places in Revelation if you'd like to write them down. It's found in the text that we read to you in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. It's found again in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 10. It's found again in Revelation 8 and 13. It's found two times in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 10. It's found in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 13 verse 12. And two times in Revelation 13 and verse 14. And then it's found in Revelation chapter 17 verses 2 and 8. However, I want you to understand that the book of Revelation is not the only place in the Bible where we discover the term earth dwellers or those who dwell on the earth. First of all, if you're taking notes, write down, number one, earth dwellers mentioned in the Old Testament. Number one, earth dwellers mentioned in the Old Testament. And I oftentimes abbreviate in my notes Old Testament as OT and New Testament as NT, if that wants uh, to be known to save you a little bit of writing. The term earth dwellers or inhabitants of the earth or inhabitants of the world actually originated not in the book of Revelation, it originated in the Old Testament. It is of special significance that both earth dwellers and world dwellers are found referenced multiple times in the book of Isaiah. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, for your notes, Isaiah chapter 24 through Isaiah chapter 27. Isaiah 24, 
25, 26, 27, those four chapters in the book of Isaiah are oftentimes called in theology Isaiah's apocalypse. And we find frequent references to these earth dwellers there. But here's the point that I want to make clear. In every single instance where we find these earth dwellers, inhabitants of the earth, inhabitants of the world, without exception, throughout the Old Testament, it is always found within the context of judgment and God's wrath. Very important. The term earth dwellers, inhabitants of the world, inhabitants of the earth, depending upon the English translation that you're reading from, it originated in the Old Testament. But in every single instance, it was always within the context of of judgment. That's important to remember, and I'm going to come back to that when we focus specifically on earth dwellers and its multiple usage in the book of Revelation. Number two, earth dwellers mentioned in the New Testament. Number one, earth dwellers mentioned in the Old Testament, that's where it originated. Number two, earth dwellers mentioned in the New Testament, we know it's of importance because Jesus Christ himself mentioned them. He prophesied specific details about this classification of people who dwell on the earth. If you have your Bible, let's go into the book of Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, if you're a new believer, the third book in the New Testament and the 21st chapter. Luke chapter 21, and go down to uh, verse 34, because it's in this passage in Luke's gospel that we read uh, of the Lord's Olivet Discourse and about the end times. Luke chapter 21, verses 34 through 36. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Jesus brought a light of prophecy upon those who dwell on the earth. Again, just a theological term often used, earth dwellers. And it teaches us by the prophecy of Jesus that this classification of people are going to be ensnared by their self-indulgence, by their willing sin, and thereby left behind to face judgment during the tribulation period. That brings us to number three. Earth dwellers mentioned in the book of Revelation. And so, number one, earth dwellers in the Old Testament. It originated in the Old Testament in Isaiah's apocalypse, referred to multiple times, always within the context of judgment, Earth dwellers in the New Testament, Jesus Christ himself prophesied specific details about these earth dwellers, these who dwell on the earth. And then the focus of our study, earth dwellers mentioned in the book of Revelation. And I've already mentioned all of the references. Let me give them to you one more time so you can check your notes we're finding earth dwellers in the book of Revelation in chapter 3, verse 10, uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 10, Revelation 8, and verse 13, uh, two times in Revelation 11 and verse 10, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, Revelation 13, verse 12, Revelation 13, verse 14, two times there, 
And then in Revelation chapter 17, in verses 2 and verse 8. Let me read uh, some of these to you because in the book of Revelation, as we highlight these verses and look at earth dwellers within the context of the multiple times that this classification of people are addressed in Revelation, it's there that we find out exactly and with detail who they are and what is going to happen to them. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong. And then in Revelation uh, chapter 6 and verse 10, They shouted to the Lord and said, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge the people who belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they have done to us. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 10, they are identified as a very specific group of people living on the earth during the tribulation who are persecuting and martyring and killing believers. In Revelation chapter 8, Revelation chapter 8 and verse 13, Then I looked and I heard a single eagle crying loudly as it flew through the air, Terror, terror, terror to all who belong to this world because of what will happen when the last three angels blow their trumpets. Uh, in Revelation 8.13, we find greater description of this classification of people called earth dwellers. We see how many of the terrors and judgments that take place during the tribulation period are reserved specifically for these earth dwellers. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 10. All the people who belong to this world will gloat over them and give presents to each other to celebrate the death of the two prophets who had tormented them. Uh, we, in reading the book of Revelation, see that even in the tribulation period, God is going to present the gospel and provide grace and provide a hope even for people during the tribulation period. It's one of the pictures of the greatness of God's mercy and grace that even during the tribulation period that is set aside as a seven-year span for the ungodly and to purify Israel, that God is still going to have the gospel preached. And there are many methods as to how God is going to preach and share the gospel during the tribulation. We know that he raises up 144,000 Jewish evangelists, 12,000 from each tribe. We know that he's going to send three messenger angels who are literally going to travel around the earth Three magnificent messenger angels reserved for preaching the gospel during the tribulation. And it seems as if these three angels are specifically sent from God to give these earth dwellers one last opportunity. And then we know that God sends two prophets. And these prophets are going to preach eventually they're going to be martyred. And the Bible tells us that they'll lay their bodies openly in Jerusalem on display and that they'll gloat and they'll have a party and they'll exchange presents over the termination of two of God's prophets. But in the middle of their ungodly perverted party, the Bible tells us that God is going to raise those two prophets from the dead for all of the world to see. Again, a testimony of the power of God for unbelievers during the tribulation period. And it is the earth dwellers 
specifically, specifically that the Bible says who are rejoicing, partying, sending gifts to one another, that these two witnesses have been killed in Jerusalem during the middle of the tribulation. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 and uh, verse 8. There the Bible says, And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that belongs to the Lamb who was slaughtered before the world was made. They're mentioned again in that 13th chapter in verse 12. The earth and its people to worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And then again in verse 14, he deceived all the people who belong to to this world. And so the earth dwellers in Revelation chapter 13 are mentioned four times. And in the four references to the earth dwellers in Revelation 13, we learn four very important facts about these earth dwellers. Fact number one, their names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. Four things Revelation 13 reveals to us about the earth dwellers. Number one, and importantly, their names, all of them, are not written in the Lamb's book of life. Secondly, they have been seduced by Satan's miracles that have been performed by the Antichrist, who is Satan's puppet. Revelation 13 tells us that there will be an unholy trinity that will be working during the tribulation, and Revelation 13 reveals that unholy trinity. The beast is the Antichrist. The Bible also speaks of the false prophet and the dragon, which is Satan. That is the unholy trinity of the tribulation revealed to us in Revelation 13. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And number two, these earth dwellers have been seduced by the satanic miracles performed by the Antichrist. Number three, they have rejected the resurrection of the true Christ, but are fully deceived by the resurrection of the Antichrist. These earth dwellers, number three, they have fully rejected the resurrection of the true Christ, but they have been fully deceived by the resurrection of the Antichrist. And number four, they have given their total allegiance and worship to the Antichrist. And we read what happens in Revelation 13, verses 12 through 14. Take a look there. Revelation 13, verses 12 through 14, he exercised all the authority of the first beast, and he required all the earth and its people to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. He did astounding miracles, even making fire flash down to earth from the sky while everyone was watching. And with all of the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, he deceived all the people who belong to this world. He ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast who was fatally wounded and then came back to life. And let's go to Revelation chapter 17 and verse 2 where we see another reference of these earth dwellers in the book of Revelation. We're walking down through each one of them systematically. Revelation 17 and verse 2, The kings of the world have committed adultery with her, and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. And so we learn another characteristic about this classic classification of people called earth dwellers. They have been made drunk, the Bible says, by the immorality or 
by the wickedness of this end time political system. In other words, they are strongly under the influence. They are strongly under the influence. They have submitted and pledged their allegiance to this one world government, one world leader, one world monetary system, one world religion, and one world military power that the Antichrist has employed that enforces all of these ungodly mandates. And then the last one, Revelation 17 <clears throat> and verse 8. Revelation 17 and verse 8. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who had died, because the book of Revelation teaches us that the Antichrist is trying to replicate Jesus Christ. He is a false Christ. That's where uh, the term Antichrist comes from. He is the antithesis of the only <clears throat> begotten of God. And just as Jesus was resurrected, the Antichrist is going to pull off this deception of being fatally wounded and then resurrected from the dead as an attempt to replicate Christ. So let's close with this. Who are the earth dwellers and what will happen to these earth dwellers? Let me take those one at a time. First of all, who are the earth dwellers? Well, as I've walked you through the scripture systematically and piece by piece, there is no theological question mark as to who this classification of people are during the tribulation. The earth dwellers are unsaved people who during the tribulation stubbornly and steadfastly continue in their rejection of God. In spite of all of his miraculous ways of preserving and presenting the gospel during the tribulation period, these earth dwellers stubbornly and steadfastly reject God's message. They are those on earth who are totally given up to evil and embrace a hatred of God and thereby a hatred of God's people during the tribulation. Because there will be people who will respond to the gospel and receive the gospel. Revelation chapter 6 tells us that there will be a remnant of people who will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ as the 144,000 Jewish evangelists are preaching, as the two prophets are sent to preach, as three miracle angels are sent to preach, as God has made a way even during the horrors of tribulation, as he's judging the world and purifying Israel. The gospel is miraculously preached, and Revelation chapter 6 tells us that a multitude that no man could number from every nation, every tribe, and every language will respond and will receive Christ as the true Son of God, as the prophesied Messiah, and be saved. They are not the earth dwellers. And this is why I believe this question is important, is because the Bible makes a distinction between the classification of the remnant of those who are saved during the tribulation and another distinction between what the scripture translates, and again, depending upon your translation of the Bible, the inhabitants of the earth, those who dwell on the earth, but many times in theological circles referred to as earth dwellers, these called earth dwellers have no hope. They hate God. They hate his message, and they hate his people, and they will be vigorous participants in the torture and the martyr and the beheading and the execution of all who received Christ during the tribulation. That's why it's so important 
to receive Christ before the rapture. Because though a multitude will be saved during the tribulation, 100% of all who receive Christ in the tribulation will indeed have a salvation that's as real as mine and as real as many of you who are listening. But most of them are going to be martyred for their faith. And it's important that we understand while there is opportunity, if you're listening today and you're not right with God, if you're backslidden away from the Lord, if you've returned to old lifestyles and old sins and old illicit relationships, in just a moment I'd like to pray with you. And today can be a day where you can recommit your heart to Christ and say, I'm going to live ready for his soon coming. One scholar writes about these earth dwellers, quote, all of these revelation references to them that dwell upon the earth clearly indicate that they will be unsaved people of the future period of testing who will never get saved in spite of the devastating horrors of the sixth trumpet which will kill one-third of mankind, the earth dwellers will not repent of their wicked deeds. And I close with this. What is the fate of all of the earth dwellers? Well, in Revelation chapter 3 and verses 10 through 12, we have a remarkable comparison between two classifications of people one being believers, one being earth dwellers. In verse 10, the promise is given to believers, I will protect you from this hour of testing that is coming to this world and all who belong to it. So Revelation 3 and 10 speaks about God protecting and preserving the church. The church is raptured before the tribulation. But it says the reason for the tribulation is a period of testing, judgment, wrath, apocalyptic judgments coming upon earth dwellers, all who dwell on this earth. Whereas in verse 12, the Bible says all who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God, and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from my God, and I will also write on them my name. So here we have this direct comparison between these two classifications of people. Those who belong to this world, earth dwellers, inhabitants of this world, who will never repent, never receive Christ, never receive the gospel, and will not only reject it, but will turn their passions to the destruction of everything that is God, including all who are saved during the tribulation period. Those who belong to this world are compared in extreme and opposite terms from the citizens in the city of God. That's my prayer. I want to be sure that I'm ready for the soon coming of the Lord. I have a hope that I will be a citizen in the city of God. The earth dwellers are those who belong to this world. In conclusion, in your notes, the earth dwellers are those who belong to this world. They have rejected Christ. They have revolted against God's people. They have received the Antichrist and his mark. Their names are not recorded in the Lamb's book of life. And therefore, their eternal fate has been sealed. Look at Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, shouting, 
Anyone who worships the beast in his statue or who accepts his mark on the forehead or on the hand must drink the wine of God's anger. It has been poured full strength into God's cup of wrath and they will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. The Bible could not be clearer on the fate of the earth dwellers. 100% of these earth dwellers referenced in Revelation have pledged their allegiance to the one world government, the one world leader, the one world monetary system, and the one world religion. Therefore, because of the mark that they have received either on their forehead or on the back of their right hand, they have willingly identified themselves and their destiny will be eternity, the scripture tells us, in the lake of fire. I close with this thought because I don't want to leave you with a teaching without hope because obviously when we understand the fate of the earth dwellers, those classifications of people who have been put on this earth remain on this earth during the tribulation, remain unsaved, remain in rebellion, remain in hatred, and even involve themselves in the passionate persecution of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because there will be a remnant. Again, I mentioned it earlier, Revelation 6, there will be a remnant, a multitude that no man could number who will receive Christ, but not these earth dwellers. But I want to remind you that we read of the three angels that God sends miraculously to preach. We read of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists that God sends to preach. We read of the two witnesses that God sends to preach. And it's that that I want to leave you with. That even in the apocalyptic horrors of the tribulation period of Revelation chapter 6 through chapter 19, there is a thread of God's mercy always available to those who would turn from sin and turn to his only son, Christ. And I want to leave you with this. You will never face the wrath of God until you willingly reject the mercies of God. I want to say that one more time. You will never face the wrath of God until you willingly and purposefully reject the mercies of God. If you're listening to me and you do not know where you stand with God in these last days, but as you've been listening to the Bible, there's something in your heart that reaches out to God and you'd like to be saved, you'd like to be forgiven, the Bible still says all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can pray with me right now. Will you do that? You're not talking to me and you're not doing this for me. Praying is talking to God and God hears your prayers if it comes from a sincere heart. Pray with me wherever you're at. Just say, Heavenly Father, today as I was listening to the Bible being taught, I have felt your drawing and I have felt your conviction and I have felt your compassion. Today I recognize my sin and I am willing to repent and to receive Jesus Christ. In childlike faith, I believe Christ is your only son. He lived a sinless life died upon the cross, was resurrected, and promised to return. Forgive me with the blood he shed. Make me pure and holy in your eyes. Today I receive salvation by God's grace. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. For I vow this day I will serve the Lord. And according to your great grace, today I am saved and I'll never be the same. 
Fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me the power to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, 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 oh,